Hi, everybody. I'm Coach Doug O. I am your wellness coach. And today, I'm going to be doing Lunch and Learn on the pros and the cons of tracking calories for weight loss or even for weight gain. Now, if you've coached with me in the past, um, I am a big believer, okay, in knowing where your calories are coming from. I always tell people do the math, um, but I also tell everybody that they're individuals. So there are pros and cons to tracking, and we have to figure what's best for us. Now, the uh, one thing when it comes to tracking, I love MyFitnessPal. Um, there's some other apps out there, too, that are free as well called Lose It, um, and any other app for matter. Um, even just taking pen to paper and do it yourself um, using like a Google, um, you know, Google search will help you figure out what your calories are. But the one thing I said I love about tracking, okay, it keeps you accountable. So not only does tracking food keep accountable, but I can keep you accountable as well. So if you don't want to track the food, but you still want some help, reach out and I'll, 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 I'll do you a solid and I'll help you, okay? Whatever your goal is. But let's go over benefits of tracking calories first versus the pros versus the cons. So what is the number one benefit of tracking your calories? You know, if it's for weight loss or for weight gain, it keeps you accountable. All right. By having to record what you consume, okay, it's a gentle reminder for you to stay on track with your goals. Okay. There is a great deal of research that has been done, okay, in regards to showing what you do is going to basically you know, help, you know, keep you adhered to your nutritional plan. Okay. So I would say if you have a budget, this is what you got. You kind of have to stick to it, right? Same thing with your calories. All right. If you just start going out there, eating your food, not recording anything, do you really have a budget? Not really, right? So it is going to keep you accountable. That's first and foremost. Number two, it helps you understand portion sizes. When you start measuring your food intake, Okay, you can start to appreciate the different uh, calorie values of different portion sizes. Okay, so for example, the caloric um, value of a teaspoon of peanut butter versus a tablespoon of peanut butter, you're going to see the differences. Okay, something that you know is eight ounces versus 12 ounces. All right, but the most important thing is you are getting knowledge. Okay, and with those knowledge, um, with that knowledge, you can make better choices. All right? So, number one, keeps you accountable. Number two, it helps you understand portion sizes. So, it'll actually show you what would be a good, healthy option for you. Okay? So, we don't overeat. Number three, it can provide you with the opportunity to reflect. The fact that you must pause and record what you're eating, okay, at each meal... Okay, not just what you want to record it when you want it, but that's going to provide you with the opportunity to pause and reflect. Especially if you use your calorie tracker to plan your meals in advance rather than the after, um, after effect. Okay, what does that mean? If you put in all your food on the app, let's just say you're going out to dinner. And let's just say, oh, you really want to have the steak, the potatoes, you want to have the salad, you want to have an appetizer, you're going to have maybe, you know, um, adult beverage or you're going to have a soda, you put all that in before, you might realize if you only get 1,800 calories a day, that one meal, that one meal alone, potentially could be 1,800 calories or close to it. So it's going to give you the opportunity to reflect or make changes before you actually eat it. Okay? Another benefit, it helps you understand energy density of food. And what does that mean? By recording the calories of each different foods that you consume, you begin to learn the different energy densities of food. For example, that a serving of tuna may be lower in calories than the same weight of salmon. All right? So it's just going to give you options. Um, you know, what is the total calories, you know, for an eight ounce steak versus eight ounces of chicken? What is the calorie requirements there? Okay? So it's also also going to help you understand your macros. And what are macros? Macros are your carbs, your proteins, and your fats, all right? 
And if we have a good understanding of these, we're going to be able to figure out what they mean. Carbohydrates are your energy. If you get too much of your carbs, they're going to go into stored energy, aka a couple extra pounds around the midsection potentially. Fats, fats are not always a bad thing, okay? Fats are actually going to help your body utilize your foods, okay? We also, we need fats, okay? Um, many different reasons why, okay? But we have to keep that in moderation as well. And last but not least, the third macro is protein. And protein is your recovery. So let's just say whether you're outside doing a lot of yard work, whether you're doing a lot of working out, um, whether your job is very active, okay? So whatever the reason is, protein is your recovery, and it's also gonna help you feel longer, okay? All right, then the other two options. And also too, protein works really well with your carbs to keep your blood sugars more in line, okay? Typically, if you just have a carb, aka energy, blood sugar is up, you feel great, blood sugar drops, okay? You wanna have more carbs. Okay, you're gonna be craving it. And that's a physical thing. Okay, the endorphins going on in the, in the mind, like, ooh, sugar, oh, sugar's gone. Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest thing is understanding when you record your food, you can see what your macros are and you wanna have a good breakdown of them. Now, my suggestion is this, we should go 50% of our diet in carbs or less. Some people who do keto, you're gonna be maybe 10 grams three times a day. Now, I think that's a little restrictive. However, no diet is off the table when it comes to reaching your goals, all right? However, I do want you to understand if you have a good mix of everything, okay? Because carbs are fruits too, okay? If you have a good mix of everything, you're more likely to stick with it. But we have to keep accountable by tracking, okay? In regards to your fats, I normally say that should be about 30% of your diet. And then finally, that protein, that recovery should be about 20% of your diet. If you have any questions on, you know, changing macros, whether how many macros I should get, how many calories I should be eating a day, reach out to your health coach, Doug Laughlin, and he will help give you suggestions, whether it's for weight gain or if it's for weight loss. But the most important thing is we should uh, track food for a little bit, okay, just to get an understanding. All right. So, now, the last but not least, um, in regards to the pros of tracking our food, it is helpful to stick to your calorie deficit, okay? If you want to have weight loss, you have to have a calorie deficit. If you don't do the math, how can you tell if you're having a calorie deficit? It's a very good question, all right? You got to track food. By recording what you consume at each meal, now that's what you eat and what you drink, you are going to have a clear way to monitor where you are at with sticking to your daily and weekly calorie needs. Now remember, with the holidays coming up, if you're going to go over in your calories for Thanksgiving or for the holidays, um, I tell people this, you just have a little bit less before the holiday and a little bit less after the holiday, and it's just winning the week, okay? So let's just say you get 2,000 calories every single day, Hey, you know what? Maybe two days you do 1,500 calories, and then all of a sudden now you got a little extra in the bank. All right. Remember that, folks. It all adds up, and take it week by week. All right? If you do it day by day, you're going to beat yourself up, and I don't want that. So win the week. So those are all the pros of recording your food. Now, what are some of the negatives or the uh, disadvantages you know, of tracking your calories? Well, number one, it can lead to nutrient poor food choices. All right, if you prioritize choosing foods based on their calorie values, okay, only, then you could choose foods that are low calories and not very um, good in nutrients, okay? So it might be low in nutrients, for example. You may choose um, a, a diet chocolate bar over a banana just because they have similar calories. However, the banana may be much more nutrient dense. It means you're getting more bang for your buck, okay? Remember, nutrients, minerals are all very good things that the body needs, all right? We shouldn't just be always having, you know, protein shakes and protein bars. I do want you to eat your food as well, okay? So it could lead to nutrient-poor food choices. 
Another negative potentially could be it may be relatively inaccurate when you eat out. Did you know that the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, allows 20% discrepancy on figures written on food labels? So when you eat eaten out, and I'll just say it says it's 400 calories, well, it actually might be 600 calories, potentially. That doesn't sound like a big deal, but if you're doing it consistently, it'll add up. So remember, that could be a negative, all right? We, not be, we might not be getting the most accurate numbers, okay? It can lead to potentially being obsessively detailed thinking. All right, what does that mean? Well, if you've got that type of mind and have a tendency to become obsessive, calorie counting may be a trigger for unhelpful thinking patterns, as well as providing the potential for you to become preoccupied with calorie counting. What that means is this, it's gonna be on your mind 24 seven and you are going to stress yourself out. When you stress yourself out, you are more likely to increase your cortisol levels, which means you might not uh, lose any weight because your stress is so high. We want to manage our stress, and if you think so obsessively, that could definitely be a negative, okay? Um, the other negative for recording food is it might be associated with the feelings of restriction. Now, if you talk to me in the past, I don't like restrictions at all. What I mean by that is this, um, I want you to be able to have a cookie if you want a cookie. I want you to be able to have a soda if you want a soda. The most important thing is if we restrict, we are more likely to go off the deep end at some point in time because it's just too hard. So what I'm getting at is being in an energy def um, deficit may already be associated with feelings of um, being on a diet, okay? Add in checking whether you're hitting your calorie number or goal may further um, assess, acerbate these feelings. So what I mean by that is this. If you are putting so much pressure on yourself, you know, to only be able to have this, this, and this, you are going to hurt yourself when you track food. So if you're feeling that way, don't do it, okay? But I want you to be mindful instead of feeling that restriction. Don't do a diet because diets die. Have a healthy lifestyle that has a little bit of everything in your diet, okay? Just be aware of the calories, all right? All right, last but not least, all right? It may not be positive for establishing positive meal behaviors. If you choose foods based solely on their calorie value, it may lead to excluding certain food groups, such as healthy fats, which have higher calorie values. If you are new to nutrition, okay, this may lead to imbalanced meals. Learning what foods are good for you and your physiology will also help you learn to prioritize portion sizes and help you with the skills that you're gonna need to educate yourself and then practice it. Ladies and gentlemen, those are the pros and those are the cons. I'm a firm believer in doing the math However, if that math gets you frustrated, you don't do it. But I do want you to make sure you have goals set up. That is most, most important thing is have goals when it comes to your weight loss or your weight gain. Now, I'm gonna leave you with this. I want you to work with a specialist, all right? Now that specialist, I'm gonna say is me, your health coach. Why? It's because I have over 15 years of experience, okay? Helping out others because that is the most important thing is there's so much information out there. Let me help you. Let me give you some ideas. Let me keep you accountable, okay? I can ask the hard questions and I can keep you going in the right direction, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you so much for your time. Hopefully, you got some good information today in regards to why you should or should not record food. But the most important thing is whatever you decide to do, keep accountable to yourself or to me or to both. And let's get you to your goals. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. As always, thank you for your, your efforts and we'll see you soon. Coach Doug O saying thank you and have a great rest of your day.